Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to make a disappearing four patch. So we start off with a four patch like this and we're going to turn it into one of these. So let's get started making our disappearing four patch like this. To make this disappearing four patch you will need two five inch squares of the same plain colour and then two five inch squares of either different colours or you could have the pattern pieces of both the same colours. I'm using two different patterned pieces. To make your disappearing four patch, first take your right hand top square and place it on top of the left hand square with right sides together. Then take the right side bottom square and place it on the left side bottom square and then we're going to sew down the right side of each of them. You can then either clip or pin in place before sewing. Sew down each side of your squares taking a quarter of an inch seam allowance. No need to back tack at the start and finish on this. And if like me you have a special quarter of an inch um, foot for your machine then good idea to use it for this. If you've chain stitched then snip your two pieces apart and cut off any loose threads. Then set your seams by lightly pressing with the seams closed. Then press the seam towards the patterned piece of fabric and press. And then repeat for your other two squares, again pressing towards the patterned fabric. Next pin the two joined pieces together, making sure that you have a plain piece of fabric opposite patterned piece of fabric and make sure that your two seams nest together nicely so that you don't have a gap between the joins. Then take over to your sewing machine and sew, taking a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And be very careful as you go over the joins, making sure that they stay in place. I like to remove the pin at the last minute. Then set your seam by lightly pressing. Then open it out where it is, leaving the seam in position. Then finger press the seam before pressing with hot iron. Thank you for watching this far. Now we have our four patch, we're all ready to start cutting. But before we start on the cutting, could I please ask, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, could you please consider subscribing? Thank you. Let's get back to making our disappearing four patch. The next step is to cut your um, four patch so that we can um, alter it. To do this, I put mine on a smaller piece of cutting board so I can turn it. If you don't have a small piece of cutting board like me, then you can put it at the edge of your table so you can approach it from two sides. That way it would be a little bit easier for you. It is best to have something you can put it on and leave it on and turn the board rather than turn the fabric. Don't try and turn the fabric. You've got to manage to cut it without actually moving it. So with your four pot patch on either a rotating cutting mat, a small lap mat like mine, if you don't have either of these two things, then place it on the corner of your table so you can approach it from two sides. And we're going to cut one and a half inches from the centre on one side to begin with. So line your ruler up and measure one and a half inches from that centre. Then cut with your rotary cutter. Then turn your mat or rotary mat, one quarter turn and I'm going to do exactly the same again, a one and a half inch cut from the centre and cut. Then rotate your mat, another quarter turn and do exactly the same. And then one last quarter turn, another one and a half inches from the centre and cut and that's all our cutting done. We just need to rearrange the pieces now. So basically all I'm doing is taking the middle piece off each side and turning it around. Now take the centre piece and turn it so the pattern squares are in the opposite corners. There are lots of other ways that you can do this but this is the way I've chosen for this video. Next pin the pieces together starting at the top row. So pin one side in place and then pin the other side in place and do exactly the same with all three rows. Being very careful with the middle row to match up the seams. So nest your two seams together and then pin in place. And continue 
to pin all of your pieces together, nesting the seams together nicely. Then sew each of the row pieces together, taking a quarter of an inch seam allowance, being very careful when you go over the seams, leaving the pins in until the last minute, so there's no chance of those seams moving about. I have chain pieced all of mine together, but if you're not confident to do this, you can just do one seam at a time. If you have chain pieced, just separate all your pieces with a pair of snips or a small pair of scissors. Then take your top row and first set your seams by pressing gently and then press all of your seams over towards the right and then press. And then the next row, you'll press all of your seams towards the left and then the third row, you'll do all your seams towards the right so that all your seams can nest together when you join them. Place the top row over the middle row with right sides together and pin or clip together, making sure that your seams nest together nicely. If you've pressed it correctly so that one of your rows seams goes one side and the other the other side, they should nest together nicely with the centre seams matching in the middle. Continue to pin and clip all the way along the row, making sure you match up all those seams nicely. And this is how it should look. Then sew together, taking a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Next, pin or clip the bottom row to the middle row. Again, matching up all the seams, making sure that the seams nest together nicely. I pinned these together. The last um, row I used um, clover clips, and I think actually pinning is the better way to do it, but you can do it either or, but I do prefer to pin. Now sew these together, taking a quarter of an inch seam allowance. First set the seams as we've done with all the other seams. And then press both of these seams so they're going upwards. So open it out first, make sure that the bottom seam is, seam is going upwards and then press the bottom seam. And do exactly the same with the top seam. And this is how it looks on the front. And if we turn it over, you can see that all the seams are going in the same direction on each row. And the middle row is going in the opposite direction to the top and the bottom seams. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have enjoyed it, could you please press the like button? See you next time.